And it was the first time that the hot line, the red line between Washington and Moscow, had been activated. And the message from the United States to Chairman Kosygin at the time was, advise General Nasser that the American planes are going to be launched to determine what the status of the Liberty was. I have spent a large part of my life flying over the oceans and identifying ships. And this ship was perhaps the easiest ship to identify that was uh, listed in the United States Navy. Equipped with antenna from bow to stern, pointing in every direction. It reminds one of a large, vigorous lobster. And a look that made it extremely easy to recognize. And so I will never, never buy the idea that uh, the pilots thought this was uh, some other ship. And it appeared from the ferocity of the attack that the intent of the attackers was to sink the ship. Maybe they hoped to have no survivors so that they would not be held accountable for the attack after it occurred. We didn't know who was attacking us. They didn't know who was attacking us. Well, I don't know how Washington can say, don't go because they're friends of ours. So that's the thing that's always bothered me right there. I never myself accepted the Israeli purported explanation. Um, accidents don't occur through repeated attacks by surface vessels and by aircraft. It obviously was a decision taken pretty high up in, on the Israeli side because it involved combined forces. Um, the ship was flying an American flag. Even if it had been unidentified from a, an, an Israeli point of view, uh, it was a reckless thing for them to do. Suppose it had been a Soviet ship. It actually produced very large problems indeed. George Ball, the brilliant and courageous Undersecretary of State at the time of the 67 war, wrote about the attack on the Liberty subsequently. He said, the ultimate lesson of the Liberty attack was that it had far more effect on policy in Israel than in America. Israel's leaders concluded that nothing they might do would offend the Americans to the point of reprisal. If America's leaders did not have the courage to punish Israel for the blatant murder of American citizens, it seemed clear that their American friends would let them get away with almost anything. Fleet Tug Papago would be our escort into Malta. The divers rigged a large canvas over the torpedo hole and it was secured in place using ropes that were passed under the hull and over the main deck. Once the canvas was in place, the Liberty could proceed under its own power towards Malta. Once we were in dry dock in Malta, then came the gruesome task of removing the bodies and the debris from the research uh, I was unfortunate enough to draw the first shift uh, as part of our division, which would be used to cut the debris uh, away from the bodies so they could be removed from the research spaces. The first body to come out was almost unrecognizable. Due to being in salt water for six days, the body was almost completely hairless. We fingerprinted the body, put it in a body bag, uh, and moved it out of the spaces. This continued through the night and on into the next day. After 33 days in Malta and the Liberty was repaired, we brought the ship back to Norfolk. Now it was over. The Liberty was home. Over. It will never be over until the truth is known. The cover-up began with the report of the casualties. The first word that we had out was before the torpedo attack that we had nine dead and 75 wounded. This has been the number that has almost invariably appeared in the newspapers as an attempt to minimize the nature of the attack, the ferocity of the attack, and the unjustifiable nature of the attack. There was no uh, press campaign to uh, uh, cover this in its entirety. Uh, for the benefit of the American people. As a matter of fact, uh, 
in many cases, the press uh, uh, supported the Israeli confession. Future Judge Advocate General of the Navy, Rear Admiral Merlin Starring, was given less than 24 hours to review the 600-page Court of Inquiry report. In the course of my career as a Navy lawyer, I have been called upon to review and take actions upon uh, hundreds of investigations of various uh, degrees of importance and volume. This is the only instance in which a record of such an investigation has been withdrawn from me after I had been asked to review it and uh, had not been given an opportunity to complete my advice to the convening authority. As you know, it's a, a voluminous document. And one of the things that uh, I initially had difficulty with, and still do, is the fact that the very first statement of fact that the court arrived at and presented was this. Available evidence combines to indicate the attack on liberty on 8 June was in fact a case of mistaken identity. Now that is the sort of thing in this record that I found great difficulty in supporting from the evidence that was included. I'm convinced that it was withdrawn from me in this instance because of my statement to Captain Boston that I was having serious problems with the evidence that was available to support the statements of fact. In the subsequent cover-up, the Israelis maintained that they thought the Liberty was the small Egyptian freighter, the al -Qusair. This is not credible. Not only was the Liberty flying a large American flag, but it was five times as large as the al -Qusair, and its profile was unique. It bore no resemblance whatsoever to the Egyptian ship. Tordella was the deputy director at the time of the attack. Tordella, when he received the copy of the, uh, the Israeli uh, mistake explanation, wrote across the top of it a nice whitewash. He didn't believe it at all. And he later wrote another memorandum for the record indicating that uh, he thought that uh, the most likely explanation was that uh, the Israelis attacked the Liberty because uh, they didn't want the Liberty to hear what was going on in the Sinai. Um, and this is the highest professional at NSA. Uh, in addition, the, the uh, director of NSA uh, at the time, Marshall Carter, um, told me that uh, he thought it was deliberate. In addition to that, he was very uh, offended in another memorandum he wrote that um, it appeared that the uh, Johnson administration wanted to cover up the whole thing. They actually wanted to sink the ship so that Israel wouldn't be embarrassed. Admiral Kidd, uh, when he came aboard our ship to interview the survivors, uh, he got us in small groups, three or four or five sailors, and he would ask us questions. The first thing he did is uh, he took off his stars, laid them on the table, and said, listen, open up to me and talk to me just like her." I'm just one of, just like you, one of you. So we did. We trusted him. We opened up with our hearts. We told him exactly the way we felt, what happened, what we saw. And when that was done, he put his stars back on, on his lapel, and he ordered us not to say anything to anybody, our families, friends, shipmates, anyone. If we did, we faced the possibility of a court-martial, penitentiary, or worse, and everyone knew what worse meant. Actually, he scared the death out of me. I didn't talk about the attack to anyone for almost 20 years.